Good morning. On behalf of Pastor Ray Lockhart Jr. and the Ellis Chapel Baptist Church family, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're glad to have you with us this morning. Um, it's a great day to be here. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for another blessed day. We thank you, Lord, that you allow us to get up and be able to come out to the house of worship this day. We pray, Father God, you forgive us for all our sins, anything that would keep us from your word this morning. We praise your holy name, Lord, because we can't do anything without you, Lord. We see how the world is, how the people are turning away from you, Lord. But we have to keep on, Lord, because we know, Lord, Father God, that you have a better place for us all. Help us, Lord, I pray this morning. We thank you and ask it all in your son Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Well, good morning again. Can you hear me? <clears throat> you can? You can? Okay. Um, today's lesson is found in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, Luke, the Gentile physician, wrote the Gospel to present an accurate account of the life of Jesus Christ. Luke also wrote the book of Acts. His original audience were Gentiles uh, and also a close friend of his, Theophilus. And he catered to outcasts. Catered to outcasts. A little bit of background. Jesus had been preaching and healing uh, in Capernaum, near Galilee, around Galilee. Uh, and after these mighty works and crowds of people needing him, there's people everywhere. He couldn't get a break. You know how it is when you just can't get a break? And Jesus slipped away to pray. We have to slip away sometimes to pray. We have to let other things go sometime and go talk to our Father and let him speak to us through his Holy Spirit. We have to get away and pray because we can't make it without prayer. When Jesus had to pray. You know we need to pray. Ever have to slip away and pray, Reverend Coleman? Sister Pat? Yes. Sister Sarah? Sister Janice, sister over there, you ever have to just get away and pray? Sometimes it may not be the place you want to pray. You may have to be up in your car praying, in the bathroom praying, in the kitchen praying, as long as you can get that prayer through. Jesus slipped away to pray. His disciples found him, though, and said, people want you to stay here. But Jesus told them he had to go to other cities and preach the kingdom of God. But that is what he was sent to do. Sometimes we want to keep people in one place because we, we love what they do where we are. But God will call them to go somewhere else. Jesus said, I got to go. I got to go somewhere else. Because that's what God has sent him to do. He knew what his father wanted him to do. Well, he said he's going to call others from where they were, where they worked, and as they were. You know, you come to Jesus just as you are. His first stop was Lake Genesaret, or the Sea of Galilee, where he made contact with a large crowd still. Large crowd of people, some of them whom we would call his first disciples or apostles. So that brings us up to our day lesson for the day. Our lesson has come out of Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. You am I, title of this lesson, Call to Significance but I would call it 
never the, never the less faith. Never the less faith. Uh, it's from the new, I'm going to read the New Living Translation. And it reads, Luke 5, 1 through 11. One day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it's deeper and let down your net to catch some fish. Master Simon replied, We worked hard all last night, didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, if you say so, nevertheless, if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boats, boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. When Simon realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I am a, such a sinful man. But he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Jebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. I couldn't help but put this in right here. Because I love the beach. I love the water. I don't know about y'all, but I love the ocean. If I can't get the ocean, a lake will do. It's being near the water. A lot, a lot of times when my husband and I would go out to eat, and uh, I, I would tell him, take me to the water, and we go to some lake. It just sit there. It's soothing. Soothing. You know. Okay, and this was a place where there was almost perfect climate. They had fruit growing 10 months out of the year. They were great. I mean, it was just beautiful. And to top it off, Jesus sitting at the boat and everybody around him and the winds were calm and it was a beautiful day and they were listening to the word of God. The people wanted to listen to the word coming from God. Not just a message, message about God. They wanted a revelation from God. What about us? You know, now when we think about it, I know I'm talking personally because you know, when, we, when I think about it, when we could come to worship and we listen to the word, sometimes I wasn't as attentive as I should be. You know, we should be looking for a revelation. Lord, what are you saying to me? What does this mean for me? And sometimes we, we're not as attentive and we let other people sit near us you know, you got in the candy, you want some gum. Uh, look at that, look at this. To distract us. Should not be. So when listening to the preacher, do we look beyond who is preaching the word to see what the Lord is telling us? Do we seek revelation? Do I ask, Lord, what are you, what are you, what, what are you revealing to me? What are you revealing to me? So as we get into the lesson, uh, he noticed the two empty boats at the water's edge. But the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. So he stepped in one of the boats, and Jesus asked Simon, who's Peter, 
its owner to push it out to the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. I, I just imagine Jesus sitting in the boat on the edge of the water and all the people just crowded around. And they were sta probably standing up. You know? And all the time we in church, they say, stand up. So, oh, Lord, I got to stand up again. But they were standing up. You know, when Ezra preached in the Old Testament, and Ezra preached, and he preached for hours, and the people stood up. They were so eager to hear the word. And I got a feeling when we open these church doors, when the church doors open back up, we're going to be eager to hear the word. Yeah. Jesus taught out of a boat. I noticed how many strange pulpits Jesus had. A boat, he taught on a plane, taught on a mountain. But we, we, we would, it was just a, a bigger, from the, it wasn't flat, so we called it a mountain. Doesn't matter where the word is declared, as long as it is the word of God. Sister Carl, you remember we used to have revival? Don't you remember we used to go? After our revival, we would go to other churches and, and, and go to their revivals too. Couldn't get enough of the word. Seemed like that changed. So where do you share about the about gospel? Sister Pat, where do you share the gospel? Where do you, where you, where you share the gospel? I share the gospel because of what God has done in my life how he turned my life around one day. When I was out there in a world of sin, trouble on me everywhere, and I felt the need for something different. And you know, I was raised in the church. I always went to church, but I wasn't saved. So I share it because what God has done for me, he'll do for somebody else. Mm -hmm. He has no prospective person. What he'll do for me, he'll do for you. Right if we just seek his kingdom first and all his righteousness. But something had to beckon me to come. And I knew what it was, but I wouldn't surrender. So I got so down till one day God touched my life, changed it, mm -hmm. a totally new person. He said, you're a new creature in Christ. Old things had passed away. I'm not the same pet that I used to be. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. why I share the gospel. You put growth in you. You put growth in you. Yeah. And when we go out, when we go out, when we're not at home, when we go out, where do we share the gospel? Everywhere we go. we go. Everywhere, anywhere, anytime. Where do we go? Where do we go? We go to the stores, shopping malls. We go to the stores, the shopping malls. We should share the gospel in the hospitals. And you know, we can <laughs> do that. the office. What about the beauty shop? Beauty shops. <laughs> you know, we can share the gospel at the beauty shop. Wherever. Bob shop? We are. Grocery store? Mm-hmm. Mall? What about the doctor's office? Mm -hmm. We can share the gospel at the doctor's office. In our homes? Yes, in our homes. On our jobs? On our job. Among our friends. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. We can share. And a lot of times, oh, a lot of times the Holy Spirit will tell you to speak. And we won't speak, but we got to have that nevertheless faith and say, well, Lord, I don't want to stand it. And I sure don't want to speak to him right now because I don't even know him. But if he tells you to do it, do it. Because it's going to help somebody. Even on Facebook. There are two ladies from our church. Uh, they get up early in the morning. They put scriptures and encouragement uh, on, on the on the Facebook. You know, you you can you can you if that's your ministry, you can do it everywhere. And you can do it everywhere. So my note says go back to the first question. What about us? What about us? Do we share the gospel? So, uh, moving on, so when he finished speaking, 
He said to Simon, now go out where it's deeper and let down your net to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night. Didn't catch a thing, didn't catch nothing. But if you say so, nevertheless, I say nevertheless, it's nevertheless. I'll let the next the net sin again. You know, Peter was obedient. Mm -hmm. He didn't really want to let them net sin. He didn't want to go back out there. You know what I know from my husband, I know a little bit about fishing. Mm -hmm. And when, when you go out, I get when you go out and and it's especially you come back in and especially if you don't catch anything and you and you're pulling out but the net, they dirty. Even if you're using hooks, sometimes you got dried bait on the hook. You gotta clean all that stuff up. And it takes a while. Here's Jesus saying, go back out. Trust me, go back out. It's not over, go back out. So, what are the, some of the excuses we would have used? Think of some of the excuses we would have used to tell Jesus uh, or to convince Jesus. You know, sometimes we try to convince the Lord. He's he telling you what to do, and you're trying to convince him that you don't want to do it, and you're trying to convince him this is not the way, Lord. And he's not talking about it. He's not telling you that. He's telling you what he wants. So what are some of the excuses we would use? What, what are some of the excuses we would use? Uh, well, the fish won't bite in the daytime. Mm -hmm. That's one of them you'll say. Fish won't bite in the daytime. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Oh, you were talking about fishing where Jesus was talking about launching out into the deep. I go out to Moss Lake sometime to sit there and meditate and watch people fish. And as I sit there and watch them fish, I've never seen anybody catch not one fish. So I was talking to this man one day. He had come by, and he was out in his boat. And I said, did you catch any fish? He said, no, not today. I said, I sit out here and watch people all the time. I never do see anybody catch any fish. He said, what you have to do is launch out into the deep. You go out into the deep water. That's where they are. They're all piled up in the deep water. Like he was telling Peter, launch out. If you go out into the deep, you're going to catch some fish. If you keep on going into the highways and byways telling people about Jesus, you're going to catch souls. And I thought about that as you were telling about the fishing. That's where they are. They're out in the deep. Well, you know, that's kind of out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I went deep yeah, that's, sea that's fishing. That's kind of out of your comfort zone sometimes, too. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why they call it deep sea fishing. Deep sea. Mm -hmm. I love deep sea fish. I do too. I, I love went. it, but you know what? I get, go ahead, Beverly Carr. And going back to that questioning you asked, what are the excuses that we use? One of the excuses is, I can't do that. Get someone else to do that. Peter said, <laughs> Peter said he had been working all night long, hard, exhausted, tired. Mm -hmm. And they did not catch nothing. We use the excuse. Yeah, we do. We use the excuse. I can't do that. We find any kind of I can't excuse. sing on the any choir. Music, any excuse to do. Yes, yes. Get someone else to do it, mm -hmm. Macy. Yeah. Get Janice over there to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was, I was, when she was talking about deep sea fishing, and that's where the big fish are. We went out deep sea fishing. I used to love going deep sea fishing. And the thing I didn't like about it, you could catch this big old fish, but if it wasn't big enough, you'd have to put it back. Couldn't keep it. You know, and I thought that was crazy. So I guess uh, uh, Simon Peter thought it was crazy for him to have to go back out, and, you know, at, at, in the daytime when he didn't catch anything at night. 
So a lot of people say, and a lot of people, they, they, they fish and they only fish at night, especially for catfish, they fish at night. So we would say, well, the fish won't bite in the daytime. All this loud noise with you preaching and scared the fish away. We just cleaned our nets. Mm -hmm. You know, it take a while, like I said. We fished all night, I'm tired. With all due respect, Lord, I'm the expert at fishing. I'm the expert at fishing. So I don't know why you're telling me to go back out. <laughs> oh, Lord. He could have said, look, master, this won't work. Mm -hmm. We fish at night because at night the schools of fish mm -hmm. come closer to the shore to feed on the minnows, and that's how we get them in the nets. But nevertheless, Lord, I'm going to do it because you said do it. Peter could have made up a lot of excuses. But he said, if you say so, he made a statement of faith, if you say so. Verse 6. And at this time, that nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. He'd gone back out into the deep now. And the nets got so full, they began to tear. And you know those nets are strong. They're real strong. And a shout for help brought partners to help. Oh, what a difference we see from the beginning of verse 5. We fished all night. The fish won't bite. But nevertheless, Lord, if you say so, I'll do it. We need that nevertheless faith. You say so, Lord, I'll do it. We went to vacation one time. You know it was at the beach, somewhere near water. And this boat was right out, right out on the, on the front there at the ocean. And they were dragging in fish in the net. There were so many fish, and everybody went down to the shore and got a little bucket or whatever they could for fish. The whole place sounded like, sound, uh, it, 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 it smelled like a restaurant that night because everybody was cooking fish. But I thought about that net, and it didn't break, but it was full of fish, full of fish. So you want me to share the good news, to say nevertheless, I don't know how well it's going to work out, but nevertheless. You want me to share the good news with that mean old neighbor that I have, Lord? They won't even speak, but nevertheless. I might get cussed out, but nevertheless. This is a good one. I have been prompted by the Holy Spirit to join a ministry in my church. But I just don't feel like I can do it. I think somebody else would be better. That's our big excuse, Reverend Cook. But we can say, but nevertheless, Lord. We can think of a lot. We might be facing right now, but nevertheless, if you say so. You've got to have that nevertheless faith. Never the ne nevertheless faith means that no matter what obstacle, but all, what obstacles they are, we're going to move forward at Jesus' word. We have to trust him. Just got to hold on just a little longer. We need that nevertheless faith. Do you have nevertheless faith? If you say, Lord, faith, you know, sometimes we get prompted to do and we just won't do. Jesus wants us to look at the love he has for us. So when Simon realized what, he had, what had happened, 
He fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh, Lord, please lead me. I am such a sinful man. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others with him. He was awestruck. He was surprised. He was, he was amazed. He just couldn't believe it. He was amazed at the fish that they had caught. You know, sometimes you can do what the law will have you to do, and at first you're just so hesitant about it, and then you go with, through with it and you think back and you just say, oh, Lord, I should have done, why did I worry in the first place? Because he's there with you all the time. He was stunned, overcome by this haul of fish. But Peter had witnessed miracles of healing. Now this is, this is something that, I, I, you know, he had witnessed miracles of healing. You know, Jesus healed his mother-in-law. He then where Jesus had, had driven out demons. But Jesus asked him to do a little simple thing. Mm -hmm. He had seen all these miracles Jesus had done. And yet, it took that for him to realize who Jesus really was. You know, we can't see Jesus until we see ourselves. Sometimes we got to open our heart to Jesus. It said, open my heart, Lord, that I can see you. This was a cry of humility. We can't follow where Jesus is leading until we see our sinfulness and we realize we cannot save ourselves. We all need help with something. Jesus knew all about this. He knew all about him. That goes for us, too. He knew all about his daily life, his fears, his doubts, his disappointments, his feeling of unworthiness, and everything he faced in life. And he knows the same thing about us. I, I'm going to share this. I don't guess my daughter get angry at me. But it was so good. The other night I was talking to one of my daughters. And we were talking about routine and the things we do when we get up in the morning or before we get ready for bed at night. And she was talking about what she does in the morning. She gets up and then she has to be at work at before six. And she was telling me, that, you know, she gets in her car, when she gets in her car, she turns on the radio. And then she says, after that, mama, she said, I turn on my music. I said, you do? She said, yeah. And she said, I turn on Tasha Cobb. He knows my name. I said, you like that? She said, oh, mama, that's my song. Because he walks with me and he talks with me. He tells me I'm his own. She said, you know, he know my name, mama. And the Holy Spirit fell on my daughter on that phone, and we had a time the other night. Mm -hmm. She said, he knows my name. Do you know Jesus knows your name? Yeah. He'll walk with you. He'll talk with yeah. you. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. Yeah. And sometimes we're not as close as we should be, and we have to get closer to the Lord. Uh, until we realize that he knows our name. And she said, the song said, oh, how you comfort me. How you counsel me. She knew it. Then she said, it amazes me that I am your friend. Jesus is our friend. My daughter got so tore up on that phone, I got tore up too, just couldn't help it. We got to where we couldn't help it. When you get into that can't help it, you know, with everything that's going on in the world, and you think even your family, your children, or whoever's not listening, 
and then you have an experience like that, it's, it's, it's something else. It increases that nevertheless faith. Because you never know who's listening to you. You can be talking to somebody else, Reverend Colin. You can be talking to somebody, and somebody else will pick up on it. That might be the one that the Holy Spirit touched. We have to be obedient. Like I say, P Peter had witnessed all these miracles. He, he witnessed all these miracles, but it took that for him to realize. He said, oh, sinful man that I am. We got to see our own sinfulness. We look in the mirror, you know, we, we look in the mirror, we make sure everything's done, everything's right. But we need to take inventory on the inside. See our own self. So we can grow and be able to tell somebody because that's work for us to do. But sometimes, and I'm going to ask the question, you think we compare ourselves to others? Mm -hmm. Why do we do that? Why do we compare ourselves to others? I think we compare ourselves to others because when I compare myself to you, Pat, and I look at you long enough, I might find something mm -hmm. a little wrong with you to make me feel better about me. Yeah. But when I compare myself to Jesus, Amen. I see my sinfulness. Mm -hmm. Peter saw his sinfulness. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He saw himself. His partners, James and John, the sons of Je Zebedee, this is verse 10, were amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You know, in the Old Testament, the people thought they saw the Lord, they thought they would die because mm -hmm. they couldn't see his face. And they thought they would die. But we have the Holy Spirit now. Jesus told Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and they followed Jesus. We don't need to fear God. Let him see our sinfulness, admit our, he knows our sinfulness, let us see our sinfulness mm -hmm. and admit that we have sin in us and he'll forgive us that we can work for him. We can do better works for him. Reaching others, teaching others. There's some people out there that are teachers. They haven't, they haven't, they haven't received, they, they don't want to answer the call. They have preachers don't want to answer the call. Yes, Lord. There are counselors. There are all kinds of people that Jesus can use. Some of us have jobs that we can use for the work of the Lord, bring it into the church. Like I said last week, this is the time. The time is now. And after what we've seen this week, we know the time is now. We need to reach people. We be fishers of men. Uh, before our church closed, and I forgot my little keychain, we, uh, we had, go, let's go fishing. Uh, we had a, a them with my head, let's go fishing. And, and, and Pastor sometime would ask us, have we caught any fish yet? We, let's go fishing. So let's not get away from that. Let's continue to fish. Let's continue to fish. What, what Jesus told Peter is something he says to each of us who come to him acknowledging our sin. From now on, life will be different. No matter how long you've been saved, sometimes you have to do inventory. And you say, okay, Lord, forgive me. And he said, don't worry, don't worry. I forgive you. You can do better. You can do better. You've not done anything that, that I won't forgive you for. Sometimes people won't forgive you, but God will. Not, life will be different. So they left everything to follow Jesus. What will we leave behind to follow Jesus? 
And you know what I've, I've noticed? And Reverend Carl, you correct me if I'm wrong. Seemed like everybody that he called was doing something. Am I right? Weren't they working? They were doing something. That means we don't need to be lazy when it comes to his word, when it comes to going fishing. We got to reach out into the deep. Got to reach out into the deep. They were doing something. So what are we going to leave behind? What are we going to leave behind to follow Jesus? Sometimes we got to leave behind friends. It comes time we think they're friends and they're not friends. If they don't love Jesus, sometimes we have to leave behind influences people that influence us. Sometimes we have to leave behind loved ones. We do. Sometimes we have to leave behind loved ones. Old habits, we have to leave them behind. And I go back to loved ones. I go back to loved ones because so many people are turning away from the faith. And a lot of times it seems like when they turn away, they get upset with you because you won't agree with them. And when you know it's wrong, and it's not Jesus, you can't agree with them. You got to let that go. You got to leave everything alone that will hinder you from Christ. It don't mean not speak to your family, you just got to stand and let them know, I stand for Christ. It could be your friend. And sometimes they get upset. But then a lot of times, way on down the road, they'll come back and say, you remember when you told me this or that? You remember? And then they see that sinfulness, they'll come in, and they would appreciate what you have said to them. That's why we got to keep fishing. Mm -hmm. That's why we got to keep fishing. Got to have that nevertheless faith. Nevertheless, faith. Today, as in Jesus' day, thinking of walking away from your job to pursue full-time ministry is frightening. I know a lot of pastors that are pastoring now, they, 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 they left their job in faith, you know, and they passed it. Uh, you know, I remember years ago, we were having Bible study one evening, and a young man came into the Bible study, and he said the Lord had told him to leave his job to go into business with his dad. His dad had started painting. That's been many years ago. That's covenant painting. And he left that job. He had a good job. But he left that job. And I remember Reverend Ellis said, Are you sure the Lord told you to do that? You got a good job. He said, Yeah. But he left that job and he did what the Lord had. Nevertheless, Lord. I don't know where this is leading, but nevertheless. And they're doing well. So sometimes you can do things that people don't understand. People just won't get it. But as long as you and the Lord know that that's what, you, what it's supposed to be, that's what you do. Peter, I know they thought, I know, what do you think the families of Peter and James, what do you think they thought? You're going to do what? And you going with this new radical man? and stuff, but hey, you got a job here to do. And you gonna do what? You leaving? You going fishing for people? Wow. And we can do some things sometimes that people think is just crazy. Yeah. But if Jesus tell you to do it, do it's it. all right. He said it's gonna be better. Mm -hmm. Sister Carla. 
Every time she raised that mic, y'all, I think she's getting ready to say something. I think she's getting ready to say something. But let's just think about the commitment that we made to Jesus and be excited about it and be fishers of men. We find that Jesus will never stir us wrong and we will always, always come out for the better if we just follow him as Peter did. And uh, that's our lesson. Just, just have that nevertheless faith. Nevertheless, Lord. I don't understand it, but nevertheless. I'm going to do it. You say do it. If you say I can do it, Lord, I know I can do it. And then I can't do it on my own. But for you, I can do it. I can do it. Thank y'all for listening. That's our lesson for today. Have that nevertheless faith. Mm-hmm. Nevertheless faith. Nevertheless, Lord. I don't understand it, but nevertheless. Keep talking to your people. Keep talking to the people on your job. Keep talking to your children. Keep talking to your loved ones in your home that's not saved. Keep talking to them. Keep telling them about Jesus. Don't bang them over the head, but when you get a chance to say something, say something good about Jesus to them. Mm-hmm. And even when they fall, help them up. Yes, ma'am. You know, you're talking about telling people about Jesus. Back in the summer, one of my neighbors, I had been talking to him about the Lord. He started coming by my house. And um, he was way down the street, and I was out there sweeping the sidewalk. It was warm. It was hot that night, and I got a big light out there. It was about 9 o'clock. He said, I see you out there. He came up close. He said, oh, I know what you're getting ready to talk to me about. He said, what? He said, the Lord. Mm -hmm. He said, because every time I meet you, you're telling me about the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he lives two doors from me. And he'll say sometimes, what you got to tell me today, Miss Pat? I said, I got something good to tell you. And it's drawing him. I can see it drawing him, dropping off things, you know. But it's in God. He's in God's hand. Keep on fishing, Pat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He knows what I'm going to talk to him about. He said, I ain't got no doubt, because every time I see you, that's what you're telling me. And he is a singer. He can sing. I said, you sing for the Lord? I said, God got great things for you. And he knows that. Mm-hmm. But it's up to him to surrender. So that's fishing. Mm-hmm. Fishing for souls. Because there's a lot of souls out here that keep need to be saved. Sure. We have to keep on. Because yeah. you know, somebody had to witness to me. Yeah, you keep Thinking somebody it ain't going to do no good. Me. You know, we didn't, all, we didn't automatically get here. That's right. Just know, we didn't automatically get here. Mm-hmm. Took a lot of prayer. And then it had to take some nevertheless faith. Yeah. Yeah. So, God bless us all and help us to do the very best that we can to be good fishermen for him. And then we pray. Father God, we thank you this morning for this lesson. We pray, Father God, that it will touch us all to help us not give up but to keep on and have that nevertheless faith. We pray for all the sick and shut in, Lord, and all the bereaved families. And we pray, Father God, that you be with us all and keep us this week. And, oh, Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. And pray for Reverend Carly, Lord, as she come to preach your word. Use her, Lord, and help us look to see what your word is saying to us. We thank you and we praise you. For it's in your son Jesus' name I pray. Amen.